Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We have done the reciprocating engine and done the discussion on propellers and all this. Now we are going to look at the thermodynamical analysis or aerothermodynamic analysis of other engines. So to begin with, we will first look at the um, engines like uh, uh, pulse jet, uh, ramjet kind of engine or the scramjet and then from there we will move to the turbojet or turbofan kind of analysis. Uh, the whole idea is that when you talk about this kind of engine like pulse jet or ramjet or scramjet this uh, they do not have any rotating components. So, they are like they do not have any compressor, they do not have any turbine, it is uh, geometric modifications are there or the geometric control is there which actually uh, takes care of the compression process and also that reduces the velocity before it enters to the combustion and then finally there would be nozzle which can actually um, provide the exit velocity to estimate for the thrust and all this. So, we will move to the discussion now on this kind of engines which are uh, having no rotating component. So, we will start with the engine is pulse jet. Okay. And then after that from pulse jet we will move to ramjet and from ramjet we will go to scramjet. So, these are the different kind of engines where the ram based cycles are there. So, they do not have the major rotating components. So, it has some sort of an entry duct and combustion chamber and nozzle. So, it is that way geometrically if one can think about it they are quite simple because uh, the major problematic component like the rotating component are not there. So, and now when you talk about the pulse jet uh, this has very limited applications because there is a great difficulties in integration into the manned aircraft. But so, the other disadvantage are very high fuel consumption, consumption, poor efficiency that is there, then uh, severe vibration noise, high noise and all these are there. So, but other way if you think about it, it is a very simple jet engine and which can be made with a few or no moving parts. So, it has only an intake duct, combustion chamber or uh, and then the nozzle and all this. So, consequently the pulse jet engine is similar to piston engines in its intermittent combustion nature, but at the same time it is similar to all jet engines in generating thrust via reaction principle for propulsion. Because, uh, so thus one can say that pulse jet engine resembles a traditional development between older piston engine and subsequent jet engine. So, that is kind of an uh, lies in between these two. The advantage here with the pulse jet are extremely light that is there, then simple cheap easy to construct 
so uses both atmospheric oxygen cheap fuels capable of running statically. So, these are the some of the advantage. So, also pulse jet have three types we have already seen it could be valved or it could be valve less or it could be pulse detonation engine. So, these are the different things and it started with uh, I think uh, the in 1906 and 1907 when the initial work was started by the scientist Martin Uwek that is in Sweden and then slowly there is a different kind of development which was carried under this kind of engine and now what happens later on like 1940s or early 1940s lieutenant william Schubert of us navy designed his valveless pulse jet engine called the reso jet so this is early 1940s in between there are other development which actually took place but its two main advantage over other design was the combustor entity has sudden expansion and produces higher turbulence for thorough mixing of air and fuels. And second one is that intake geometry was carefully designed so that the exhaust, ga exhaust gas does not escape before the pressure inside the chamber. Then there are other development also took place later on. And the other type which is so now the when you talk about the valve pulse jet it has an air scoop and set one way valve through which the incoming air process which we have already seen during the introductory lecture the geometry and things like that. And um, now if you look at that uh, now first we will start with the valved pulse jet and uh, we put uh, the simple construction of that. Let us say this is how the geometry would look like. It is a simple construction where these are the So, let us say A station number 1, this is 2, station number 3 and 4. So, this is tail pipe, this is uh, fuel supply, this is combustion chamber. So, these are uh, valve and the PV diagram would be PV diagram would be like this is A, it goes here, then goes there, then goes there. So, this is A. 2, 3, 4. This is S constant, this is volume constant, this is S constant, this is P constant. So, at the same time if we put the T S diagram, this goes like this. So, A, 2, 3, this is V constant this is pressure constant 4 and these are also S constant, this is also S constant. Now, simple thermodynamical cycle. So, this pulse jet actually operates on typical cycle called hum pre cycle. Okay. So, so, here the isentropic compression here 
then uh, here the isochoric heat addition again isentropic expansion and this is isobaric heat rejection and so that it returns to the, the simple process this is isentropic constant volume constant pressure constant isentropic. So, its intake or diffuser so, this process occurs between state A to 2 from here to 2. So, air is sucked in and into the combustion chamber through a bank of spring loaded check valve. So, A is first stream while 1 is at the pulse jet inlet and 2 is the just apt of the check valve upstream of the combustion chamber. So, now there is a ramp effect which takes place and uh, then we can get the pressure P naught A which is P A 1 plus gamma C minus 1 by 2 m square gamma C by gamma C minus 1, where m is the flight Mach number gamma C is specific heat ratio of cold air. If it is assumed that the diffuser is an ideal one or isentropic process then the total pressure temperature at state 2 is equal to those at state 1. So, what will happen that P naught 2 would be P naught 1. However, there are losses which will take place in the diffuser. So, the pressure at state 2 is always at less than 1, but process in the diffuser is assumed to be adiabatic. So, let us say having an isentropic efficiency. So, that means there is an ideal situation or there could be a non ideal situation which could be like this. So, in a non ideal situation what would be the P naught 2 would be P A 1 plus eta d gamma c minus 1 by 2 Mach number 1. So, eta d is the isentropic efficiency of the diffuser. So, isentropic efficiency of diffuser. So, in all cases I mean that is isentropic or adiabatic the stagnation temperature for state A 1 and 2 they are equal and so the temperature that could be written as T naught 2 which is T naught 1 T naught A is T 1 1 plus gamma c minus 1 by 2 max number square. Now, coming back to the combustion chamber where we now here the fuel is added and the combustion chamber through several fuel injector and they are mounted there and the combustion takes place as an constant volume process. Okay. So, what we can do to calculate that? So, since this is a constant volume process, heat addition P naught 3 would be P naught 2 into T naught 3 by T naught 2. So, the actually here the spark plug igniter is only needed for the initial startup once started the engine will continue to operate on its own with hot residual combustion gases subsequently in cyclic manner igniting the incoming fresh uh, fuel air mixture in a ha low high low passive pressure cycle. And that combustion actually takes place in a sort of an explosive explosion fashion which raises the pressure in the chamber at high level and this. So, the mass flow rate of the burnt fuel can be calculated from the energy balance equation. So, if we write the energy balance, 
where m dot a plus m dot f is C p h t naught 3 is m dot a C p c t naught 2 plus eta b m dot f q r. So, fuel layer ratio is m dot f by m dot a eta b is burner efficiency and C p c is specific heat for cold air C p h is specific heat for hot gases. Okay. Now, from here we can find out the fuel air ratio which would be C p h T naught 3 minus C p a T naught 2 and eta b q r minus C p h T naught 3. So, we find out the fuel air ratio. Now, the third is tailpipe. Okay. So, when you go to tailpipe, now the resultant high pressure and temperature forces the gas to flow out of the tailpipe with high velocity. So, if the gases are assumed to expand isentropically in tailpipe to the ambient pressure, so in that case P 4 would be P A and the temperature of the exhaust gases can be obtained through this relation T 3 by T naught 4 equals to P naught 3 by P A divided by R H minus 1 by R H. So, exhaust velocity can be now estimated which is U e is 2 C p h T naught 3 1 minus P a by P naught 3 to the power gamma h minus gamma h. And at the same time we can calculate the thrust which is m dot a 1 plus f u e minus u and the other term like uh, T s f c which is the thrust specific fuel consumption which is m dot f by t f by t by m dot a and the thermal efficiency of the system is 1 minus gamma T a by T naught 2, which is T naught 3 by T naught 2, 1 by gamma minus 1, T naught 3 by T naught 2 minus 1. So, here essentially the process is following an uh, A 3 4 1 in that cycle. So, this is how you can obtain this details of the pulse jet engine. Now, second one that we can talk about is the valveless pulse jet that is pulse jet and uh, we have already seen this simple design which could be like it could be having a design like that. So, like this and this is where the valve is. Uh, this 
then we have this and from here it goes around and goes like this here it goes like that and goes like that so this is where the exhaust this is where fuel comes in this is the inlet and exhaust two so there's a simple design that we have already seen this uh, valveless engine this is simplistic jet engine in the world as it has no mechanical valve but it does have aerodynamic valve which for the most part restricts the flow of the gases to a single direction valveless pulse jet engine is sometimes identified as acoustic jet engine or sometimes called uh, acoustic jet engine or aerovalved and or also intermittent ramjet something like that. So, this has no moving parts which means no wear it is similar to a ramjet in that respect. So, it is designed to wear issues of valves in valve type and they have all the advantage and most advantage of conventional valve pulse days. Fuel consumption is extremely high noise level is also. So, fuel consumption is high noise level is high however they do have the troublesome read valves that need frequent replacements so they can operate for their own entire useful life with practically zero maintenance so these have been used to power model aircraft like experimental go karts and even sometimes unmanned military aircraft like this so this u shape tailpipe which is sort of a 180 degree bent is there in this type of pulse jet the combustion generates two shock wave fronts one travels down each tube by so one goes this side one goes that side so this can be built in many different sizes and other things and during startup some sort of an ignition is required and for pulsating nature of the flow parameter in pulse jet engine. So, what pulsating nature? So, several researchers were I mean some um, they have performed test and to examine the fluctuating nature of the flow. So, the fundamental operating frequency for the pulse jet F which is sort of a cycles per second uh, is uh, kind of related to the length of the pulse jet which is this L is sort of an combustion and tail pipe length of combustion chamber and tail pipe together. So, that is the typically length of that. So, in acoustic terminology a conventional pulse jet operate on four length wave system that is to say it is creates four pressure waves which is compression, refraction, refraction, compression. So, this is four L waves pattern. So, what happens this four pressure waves moving at or slightly above the local gas sound speed sequentially traverse the duct system that is combustor and the tail pipe. So, thus the operational period of one cycle is T cycle would be 4 L by A which is 1 by 
f. So, various parameters in pulses like air mass flow rate, pressure, temperature, Mach number, thrust force are pulsating in nature. So, people also do like if you look at the with the time, if this is the mean, this goes like this kind of things. So, the P base pressure, pressure at Pascal, this is the P max. Similarly, the thrust also goes with time, this is second, this is thrust in Newton. So, this goes like thrust, this segment then goes like that, then again and then we have this is T mean and this is the T max. So, so this shows an idealized sinusoidal fluctuation of pressure in the combustion chamber and this is the thrust. So, they are now upper and lower absolute pressure limits and there is an idealized basement. Since they are nearly equal in magnitude, so the delta P would be plus minus 100 percent for a symmetrical cycle where vacuum limit or P is almost 0 as the most negative trap point possible in the idealized sinusoidal cycle here. So, analogous to idealized combustor pressure time cycle, so this is what the thrust time profile could be there. So, if you assume there is no appreciable negative thrust resulting from backflow during the induction phase of the operational cycle, the remaining positive components of the cycle thrust profile would produce a net mean thrust. So, the net mean thrust would be T max by pi. So, it is uh, worthy to mention here that the people have been also investigating this kind of pulse jet or rather pulsating engine through different kind of numerical analysis and because this um, testing is uh, also required to be done in a very uh, safety environment and that is why it requires because as we said that the ignition and the combustion process actually takes like an sort of an explosive process like an explosion and then there is a huge wave propagation both in this direction and that direction. So, this is what we can have in the valved and valveless pulse jet. The other one that can be there is the uh, pulse detonation engine. So, that one we will discuss in the uh, next session.